Machining projects that are larger than the table on your CNC machine or larger than the available material can often be a problem. Here for example we've got a project that's 36 inches long and 24 inches high into a pitch of inch and a half thick material. Now if you're running a CNC machine with a smaller bed, maybe a, a, a 24 by 24 CNC machine, then it's impossible to machine this sort of project. This tutorial is going to show how we can break the toolpaths into multiple pieces to make it machinable on a smaller table with smaller pieces of material. Let's take a closer look at this project to see how we can use the toolpath tiling options to split the toolpaths into smaller sizes to make them machinable on a smaller CNC table or into smaller panels of material. Here we can see it's this project is 36 by 24. If we swap to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the interface, you'll see here that we have all of the, the different toolpaths associated with the project. You'll notice that we can we can change the size of this window. So this list, by default, it's quite a small window. We can drag the window down to make it bigger, much easier to select the different toolpath options. If we just reset the toolpath for a moment, so we say reset the preview. Now we've got our 36 by 18 uh, panel, sorry, 36 by 24 panel. And we can see that we've got lots of different toolpaths here making up the project and that they may be too big to cut on our CNC machine. If we want to draw all of the toolpaths we can click on a toolpath, right mouse click and say show all so this draws all of the toolpaths in the 3D window for us. Say close the preview menu for a moment. Next we're going to select the tile toolpaths icon so tile the toolpaths. The tiling form appears we can say tile the toolpaths. Let's say we're going to machine separate individually machined panels. Let's say we want the panels to be 18 inches by 12 inches. If we say update the panels, we can say that we've got tile number one, tile number two, tile number three, and tile number four. Now the software is chopped the toolpaths up into multiple sections but each of the toolpaths is still in the wrong position. We really need all of this toolpath data to be moved to be the, at the bottom left hand corner on our CNC machine table so that we can fit it on the material. To do that we say instead of drawing the toolpaths in their original position we're going to switch this off. The toolpaths are now for each tile so tile number one bottom left hand corner, tile number two would be the bottom right hand corner of the sign but it's been moved to be in the bottom left hand corner of our material or on our machine table. If we say view tile the window, so let's say tile horizontally, you'll see here that we've got double click in, in the bottom left hand corner, so this is tile number one, double click in the right hand corner tile number two, double click in the top left hand corner, these are the toolpaths for tile number three, double click in the top right hand corner and there are the toolpaths for tile number four. We can preview the toolpaths in, their, in the location for each separate 18 by 12 panel and to do that we simply say preview the toolpath, reset the preview. So now we've got a piece of material that represents our panel size. So for example here we're using a, a panel size that's 18 by 12 inches. Now if we say preview all of the toolpaths, so all of the toolpaths in that panel are being previewed and shown as they would be cut into that 18 by 12 panel. If we now go to panel number two, preview all of the toolpaths for panel number two, we see the toolpaths for, for the, to machine the bottom right hand corner of the sign being displayed in the 18 by 12 piece of material that we have. And the same is true for panels 3 and panels 4. So if we select panel 4, say preview all of the toolpaths again. So only the toolpaths that are appropriate for panel 4, so the top right hand corner, 
are being previewed. With the tiling toolpaths form open, if we now go back and we say save, so save toolpath, you'll notice here that by default, because this form is open and we're tiling the toolpaths, the software knows that the origin for each set of toolpaths needs to be moved so the bottom left hand corner is at x0, y0. So all we would do is we'd save each toolpath in turn and the software is automatically repositioning the toolpath information so we can cut each panel, each smaller 18 by 12 panel, in the bottom left hand corner of our machine table. We can also specify an overlap, so if we wish the toolpaths to cut slightly larger than the panel, if we now say close and reset the preview form, so reset, if we look at the toolpaths associated with this panel, you'll see that it will overcut to the left and also to the top and the bottom. This allows us to, to over machine the panel slightly. So we could say, okay, we want to overcut by a quarter of an inch. If we switch the toolpaths on, so right hand mouse button show all, you'll now see if we zoom in, these toolpaths are cutting a quarter of an inch past the edge of the panel. If we say update panel, sorry, let's go back to tile number two there you go so tiling number two this was the bottom right hand corner of the sign we've said apply an overlap of a quarter of an inch in x so it's overcutting to the left by an extra quarter of an inch it's also overcutting above by a quarter of an inch this allows us to machine past the 18 by 12 boundary and then once we've finish machining that panel we can then run a simple 2d toolpath around the 18 by 12 area cutting around the outside to give us a very sharp precise edge so that the mating faces will all match up and the panels will fit together to give us our finished sign let's just hide this let's go back we'll see all of the toolpaths instantly become visible as they are for the full project if we reset the preview and that goes back to our full panel Okay, that concludes the, the tutorial for, for the first paneling, uh, toolpath paneling exercise. We're going to now move on and look at another toolpath paneling project. This project shows a very interesting textured surface that's quickly been machined using a, a simple V-carving toolpath strategy. The panel is 36 by 36 inches, so if, you, if you've got a very small machine or you've got a, a table area that's only, say, 24 by 24, or you've only got smaller pieces of material, then you wouldn't be able to machine this sort of a panel of this size. So we're going to look at a way in which we can break the toolpath up into multiple sections. To do that, we're going to use the toolpath tiling functionality. So if we, if we swap from the drawing tab on the left to the toolpath tab on the right hand side of the interface, so here we've got the, the two toolpaths that are going to be used to, to actually form this very interesting tiled texture. We just reset the panel for a moment. So reset the texture, sorry, reset the preview. See, so we've got V-carving toolpath number one and V-carving toolpath number two. And because this is 36 by 36, it may be too big to fit on the machine. So we're going to use the toolpath tiling option. So tile toolpaths, the tile toolpaths form appears. We can say tile the toolpaths and it will tile the visible toolpaths. So here we're going to say, okay, we've got pieces of material at 18 by 18 inches. So two pieces, 18 by 18, update the tile. You'll see now that we've got, we've split the toolpath that was covering the whole panel into the bottom left hand corner. We could now save this toolpath, or we could look at the other tile. So we could say, let's look at tile number two. So that's the bottom right hand corner. Tile number three is the top left hand corner, and tile number four. So we've got four different sets of toolpaths that are, that are based on our original VCarve Pro toolpaths. If we look in, in the, if we split the window so we can see both views simultaneously, here we can see. Let's just undraw the vectors for a moment. So I'm going to say, go to the layer tab, undraw, and switch the layer tab off for a moment. 
you'll see here that we've got toolbar tab sorry tile number one double click in the right hand corner tile number two top left hand corner tile number three top right hand corner tile number four now saving the toolpaths for tile number four up in the top right hand corner isn't going to be any good in helping us cut this on a smaller machine table what we need to do is move this toolpath data into the bottom right sorry bottom left hand corner to do that we simply say draw the toolpaths where the, the tile is going to be positioned not in the original position so switch this off and the toolpath sec segment gets moved to the bottom left hand corner and this is the same for all of the toolpath segments they're all being shifted to be in the bottom left hand corner to make them machinable on a smaller bed size or into a smaller piece of material let's just maximize the three-dimensional view for a moment so I double clicked in the the window header we can preview this so we can say preview the different toolpaths preview reset the preview this now gives us a, a tiled preview block that's 18 inches by 18 inches and if we say preview all toolpaths this shows us the toolpaths for panel number one being carved you can see there if we look along the edge this is we'd end up with a the the texture being cut through the material and we'd have this open edge if we look at tile number two so tile number two if we preview the toolpath again so preview all of the toolpaths now you'll see that we've got the the corresponding or the mating edge on the right hand side so these two edges would fit together to give us the bottom edge of our 36 inch long panel if you look at tile number three and preview all of the toolpaths again you'll see so tile number three is the top left hand corner And tile number four is the top right hand corner so we should see the texture pattern breaking free on this right hand edge so preview toolpaths and there you go so we've got the the textures would match on the internal face we can force the toolpath to overcut by which is what we're doing here we're saying overcut by a quarter of an inch if we preview the look at the toolpaths just reset the preview block for a moment you'll see there if we say view straight down the z-axis for this particular tile so for tile number four the software is overcutting by a quarter of an inch in X and Y and you'll see that that's the quarter of an inch along each axis this allows us to ensure that the, the toolpath overcuts very slightly and then you can very simply create a, a, a 2D profiling toolpath to machine around your 18 inch square piece of material to make sure you get a nice sharp crisp edge that where the mating faces are so again once we're once we're happy with the the tiled information so we're happy with the the size of the tiles and the overcut distance with each tile selected so let's say for example tile number one selected you'll see there that it's overcutting to the right hand side by a quarter of an inch with the tile selected we simply say save the toolpaths you'll notice that the option to only output the toolpaths use by moving them to have the origin in the bottom left hand corner is automatically checked so this moves the geometry for the toolpaths always to be the bottom left hand corner as being to be x0 y0 so now when we save the toolpaths we save the toolpaths and all of the xy uh, xyz coordinate coordinate information is relative to the bottom left hand corner so for example tile number four which was up in the top right hand corner if we draw that in its original position tile number four top right hand corner when we save this toolpath it's all been shifted so that the xy origin is in the bottom left hand corner so it fits onto our machine table and on, onto the piece of material that we're interested in carving the texture into that concludes the texturing uh, uh, sorry the toolpath tiling demonstration and presentation thank you